In this video, I want to talk about what we can do to improve our listening competence. In other words, what can we do to become better listeners? So we're going to start with a conversation about active listening and then talk about listening within the context of some different listening styles. So let's begin with active listening. Active listening is the process of pairing outwardly visible positive listening skills with positive cognitive listening practices. So we're talking here about things we do internally or cognitively with our mind and other things that we do behaviorally that we can do to both increase our uh, abilities as a listener and also to demonstrate to the other person really that we're listening in the first place. So let's start with our cognitive skills. What are some internal psychological type things that we can do cognitively to improve our ability as active listeners and to engage in listening and it's an active process? Well, first we can prepare to listen. We can, we can prepare ourselves mentally to listen. We can set ourselves in a situation, in a, mentally in a, in a position to say, okay, this is going to require some effort. This is going to require my attention. And this is where I need to focus my attention for the next little bit here, for however long this is going to last. I need to shut out some other things. So we can start to get our mind geared toward the idea that we need to be effective listeners, and that'll be very helpful. We can maintain focus, and that, I mean, is is a really big effort at times, right, to maintain that focus, but but we can really work to do that. We can kind of corral our mind and our thoughts and, and work to block other things off um, so that we can maintain focus. We can find our motivation. Sometimes, you know, it's very clear to us what's at stake in a conversation, so we listen well because of that. Other times, though, we need to, to find a reason to listen. We need to, you know, kind of motivate ourselves and give ourselves some sort of reason to listen so we can work to actively to find that motivation. We can take advantage of our rapid mental processing. You know, we've talked in previous videos about how our mind actually works faster than the other person talks, and that can be a real challenge in listening. But we can turn that around and take advantage of it by um, uh, doing some different things that take it, you know, that make that work in our favor. The fact that we're going to have some extra kind of brain power while that person is speaking, which in, in some cases could be a real distraction, could be a real issue, but we can turn that into a positive in a couple different ways. First, we can engage in some internal dialogue, right? We, we do things like covert coaching, which would be, uh, you know, you know, coaching ourselves to, no, I'm losing focus, let's bring it back around here, you know, let's coach ourselves and work our mind into that mental state where we can listen, but we do that silently, obviously, we don't do that out loud, but we do that cognitively in our mind, we coach ourselves to uh, to become better listeners. We can do self-reinforcement, if we're doing a good job of listening, we can say, you know, this is great, you're doing a great job, We're doing, and it sounds silly, but, you know, that, that kind of uh, intrinsic reward can be very important to our mind in keeping focus there. And we can engage in covert questioning. What did that person just say? Do I understand that? How does that fit into what I know and into what's going to be important to me? Again, these are not things we're saying out loud, but we're in our mind. We're connecting what that person is saying to what we think is true or not true and what we, how it will apply to us. And, you know, we can do all this, you know, question ourselves covertly. We can, uh, you know, focus on related thoughts. Focus on related thoughts and bringing things again back around to what's going to uh, be important to us and and you know kind of on the flip side of this we have mental bracketing which is closing off sort of in our brain closing off those other things that aren't really related to this that aren't specifically related to that we can we can bracket those things off and we can focus on the, the things that are related to what this person is speaking about we can also use mnemonic mnemonic devices to kind of help us remember things and and, and also to keep our brain active while we're while we're doing this, but still related to what that person is talking about, we can try to create acronyms or rhymes or use visualization. Again, keeping that focus on what that person is talking about, but allowing our mind then to expand a little bit and remain active while still being involved in that conversation and focused on that conversation. Along with those cognitive skills in active listening, we need to engage in some behavioral skills. So these are the outward facing skills that will demonstrate to the other person that we're listening and will also help us focus on that listening and be engaged in that listening. Uh, one important one is eye contact. We need to, you know, really focus on eye contact. Now that does not mean staring at the person in a creepy way and never looking away or whatever, but we need to engage in the appropriate amount of eye contact, bearing in mind that this also varies from culture to culture, but the appropriate amount of eye contact. If we're just staring off into the distance the whole time somebody's talking to us, then we're not giving any impression that we're listening to them. So we need to let them know that our focus is on them and what they're saying and engage in the appropriate amount of eye contact.
There are other nonverbal behaviors as well that we can utilize. Um, things like you see in this picture, we see things like, you know, a smiling where appropriate or, or the appropriate facial expression in that way, uh, raising your eyebrows, things like that, maybe leaning in while also remaining uh, or maintaining that eye contact. Those are all nonverbal behaviors that can be uh, can be effective in active listening because they'll demonstrate that a listening behavior that we are engaged that we are focused that we are uh, we are actively listening to that person so we need to be aware of our other nonverbal behaviors as well making sure that they are matching uh, what's appropriate for that particular conversation um, verbal back channeling you know we can we can provide just some very simple responses to, mm -hmm, yes go on I understand you know not things that are really elaborate responses because we don't cut the other person off but but verbal back channeling to let them know yes I'm focused I'm paying attention I don't know we need to be careful too because it's very easy for us to engage in what's called pseudo listening we talked about and that's an ineffective listening behavior we do a lot of verbal back channeling and we do a lot of these things when we're uh, we're engaging in pseudo listening but but it can also be an effective active listening skill you know when we're actually paying attention when we're actually listening to that person we can reference their previous statements in a little more expanded way we can you know and that indicates to them that we're we're listening we're retaining information we're recalling information so we can reference previous things that they've said we can ask questions this is a great way to engage in active listening when we ask you know really pertinent questions and questions that are related to what that person is saying you know remember that's kind of be on track too if somebody's talking to you about a, a personal problem you're having and you're just saying mm -hmm, what are we having for dinner what do you want to do tomorrow night when do you want to get together again those are not, those are questions but they're not pertinent and related to what that person is talking about here we're talking about asking questions that relate and and provide meaningful feedback or, or engagement with that conversation specifically we want to avoid interruptions and this can be difficult but we, but we need to you know be mindful of the fact that uh, when we're engaging in active listening it is you know it's something that we need to avoid interrupting the other person unless there's you know a situation where we don't understand something we really have something that has to be said right then uh, when we're engaging in active listening we ought to be uh, more on the receiving end of things and allowing that person to speak until it's time for us to ask questions or do things like that so we want to avoid things that are going to interrupt their flow we can also take notes uh, this may seem weird in some circumstances you know if you're talking to your, to your friend about their recent breakup you might not want to be taking notes but if your boss is giving you instructions on how to complete a task or if a customer is talking to you about something they didn't like that happened with the service or product you provided maybe take some notes that'll that'll show initiative also help you organize and retain information uh, but also just in general demonstrate that active listening skill so <coughs> all those things excuse me we can use to uh, use for active listening to engage in active listening uh, and we can use active listening as a part of all these other different types of listening when we talk about listening styles so again in a previous video we talked about there are different listening styles right we have discriminative listening informational listening critical listening and empathic listening so we're not going to spend any time talking about discriminative listening because that's really just you know kind of picking out what you're hearing and what you're paying attention to so what we're going to focus on for the next few minutes though is the other types of listening styles informational critical and empathic and you can use active listening then in each of these circumstances but let's talk specifically about how we can improve uh, our listening for each of these particular circumstances and listening styles so just as a reminder when we're talking about informational listening we're talking about listening with the goal of comprehending and retaining information so again this could be if you're in class you know which you may be right now listening to this video for a class right so you may be trying to just soak this information in. you're trying to comprehend and retain that information this could also be if you're receiving instructions again from your boss on something or you know from anybody just trying to and you're just trying to take the information in so that you can both understand it and so that you can pull it back up sometime and apply that information if necessary so in terms of improving informational listening one important thing you can do is paraphrase what was said now remember paraphrasing is not the same as parroting parroting is just repeating back mindlessly right without really showing any understanding you're just repeating word for word what that person says paraphrasing your book putting putting it into your own words and putting it in such a way that the other person knows that you're demonstrating you understand that information okay so it's not just repeating mindlessly word for word what that person said it's putting it in your own words arranging it in a way that's a little different so that it demonstrates that you understand it both for yourself 
and for the other person. But paraphrasing is a great uh, listening response uh, for informational listening and a great way to, to kind of uh, further that type of listening and, and to demonstrate you're actually listening. Uh, also in informational listening, you want to remember that not all information is equal. I hate to say this as, a, as an instructor, and you know I hate to say this, and I hope none of your teachers are listening, but the truth is not everything we say is of equal value in the classroom, right? There, I mean, I, you know, if I say, and I don't, I haven't calculated this, but if I say, you know, a hundred thousand words during a class session, probably, you know, ten thousand of those are actually uh, things that are going to come up on a test, or things that are really specifically applicable. The rest of it's, it's not that the rest of it's not important or not helpful, but the rest of it's kind of filler, trying to trying to support that other information. We can focus on key ideas and remember that not information, not all information is equal. We don't have to get down every single word in our notes, right, when we're trying to listen to these things. We need to listen for key ideas and focus on those and then understand how the rest of that supporting information falls under that, right? But bear in mind that not, informa not all information is equal. You need to allow for the fact that you may not know it all, right? You may not be an expert in this situation, and that may mean setting aside something that you think, well, I already know this. Or that's not, you know, so you've said something different from what I believe, so what you said is not true or not important or whatever. <clears throat> we need, to, in informational listening, be able to set that aside for a moment and recognize that there may be things about this that we don't know or that we don't understand. Uh, and even if we think we know about that, then we can take that information in and then compare the two later. So we need to allow that, you know, we don't want to shut our brain off just because we think we already know everything there is to know about this topic. We also need to listen for substance over style, right? You may have an, uh, an instructor or, or a boss or somebody who's not very interesting to listen to. That doesn't mean their ideas aren't important. The style of their, their presentation may not be great, but they may have a lot to share with you that's of value. And vice versa, just because somebody says something really well doesn't mean they're really saying anything at all. Right. We've, I mean, just for example, you find lots of politicians that say a lot and say it really well, right? And a lot of speakers that do this in general. But at the end... What have they really said to you? What have they really added? So we need to listen for substance over style in informational listening. Okay, so for critical listening, critical listening is a little different, right? Critical listening involves evaluating the credibility, completeness, and worth of a speaker's message. So when we're doing that, we need to keep things in mind, like distinguishing between facts and inferences, right? There's a difference between saying these are oranges and oranges are great. Right? Or, these are oranges. That's a fact. I mean, we all agree on the fact that those are oranges. If you speak English, that's, those are oranges, right? And, and that's what they are. That's a fact, right? That person's not trying to get us to, to do something or believe something otherwise. Oranges are great, however, isn't something that is a fact. It's, it's something that's subjective for that person and may not be true for all people. So, uh, so it's not a fact. It's an inference. We need to differentiate between those things because some people will say things as fact that are, in fact, inferences, right? So, distinguish, as a critical listener, between facts and inferences. We need to evaluate supporting evidence. We all know that statistics can be found to support either side of an argument, and evidence can be found to support either side of an argument. So we, as listeners, as critical listeners, need to evaluate that evidence and make sure that we're getting good stuff, and that they're not just feeding us stuff that doesn't really add up or really apply. So we need to be a little skeptical about those things and evaluate that evidence. We need to discover our own biases, and we all have them. You know, we all have biases, so we need to recognize that. We need to be able to look in the mirror and say, this is who I am, this is my bias, and, and how can I uh, get around that, and how does that affect how I'm hearing these things? We also need to listen beyond the message. We need to consider the context of that message, the setting, the nonverbals for that person. We need to listen beyond just exactly the words that are being said and, and move beyond that into the, to the further... Uh, critical nature. As far as empathic listening, you want to listen to understand or experience what the speaker may be thinking or feeling. And so that involves, first of all, withholding judgment. That doesn't mean we have to, you know, totally buy everything or set aside our own uh, beliefs and values, but we need to at least withhold judgment while we're listening empathically. We can once again use paraphrasing and questioning when we're engaging in empathic listening to demonstrate that we're listening. And we can engage in nonverbal mirroring. Now, this doesn't mean, you know, totally copycatting the person, but we can, you know, when they're leaning in, we can kind of we can kind of mirror that to help them feel comfortable and help them feel better about us as listeners. The most important thing to remember with listening is that it is a skill, and, and what I call whippy why go What you put in is what you'll get out. So if you want to improve your listening, you need to work at it. 
LeBron James didn't become LeBron James overnight. He started as a scrawny little high school kid. So if we want to become the LeBron James listeners, we need to put the work in just as he did.